piece right here typically is not actually the head. The head is right here on the end, right on the very end. They did the same kind of thing that IBM did like in the, in the 50s. They basically put a slider mechanism on here to hold the head because the head is so small that there's nothing to mount it to. And so they've got to do something basically to give it some, some pizzazz there. So it mounts on the end of that. And you'll also see too from the way that this piece of metal moves, you can see that the whole idea of the hard drive was made so that when the pressure from the air was spinning up and the drives and platters were spinning up, the pressure is what's pushing up on that. So you can see how flexible these things were. And they're actually made as a triangle on purpose because it gives it the most rigidity at the end and takes off all the extra metal and then they cut all the holes in it. And that's the same thing for the holes down here on the arm where the airflow actually helps, kind of like the wing of an airplane, push those apart in a certain pattern so that you can actually make that head float. This is what it looks like when it's bad news. If your piece of paper falls out, and that's, a, and that's another good thing too, is that when you're doing this, you need to be in a spot where somebody's not bumping your arm. So you need to make sure that there's nobody standing behind you or any of that kind of stuff and just kind of lock the door or whatever. And, uh, and make sure that that does not hit each other at all. Because if your arm gets bumped and that little piece of paper falls out, it's game over. You're not going to be able to do it with this. Just stop right there, close it back up, and go back to eBay. And go get another drive. Start all over again. So now you're ramping up your cost, though, but most of the time you can buy these older drives or anything that's like 250 and below, easily 69 bucks, 70 bucks. so most of the time you're going to save still a lot of money. This is what that ramp looks like. Now, this one happened to be an IBM, and it's got these little fingers on it that actually help line it up on the ramp. These are great, because if you've got one of these, then, and so you open up your drive and you see that, it's like, woo, i got a party going on, because this is, this is going to help you a lot, get that thing lined back up. If you don't have a ramp on it, then it's going to be hard to try to get it in the exact spot so that when the head comes back out onto the platter, it doesn't drag the bottom of the head along the platter and just scrape it right back off. Because once that happens, the rest of the thing is going to dig into it like an airplane. It's just going to crash right into that platter and scratch the crap out of it, and so your good data is no longer good. It's actually going to be gone. Uh, this, I think, is completely plausible and possible, and I've done it. This is four heads on two platters. And, uh, and it's great that there's a ramp there. You don't usually see a ramp when you got four. But uh, I got lucky in this particular one. So be very, very cautious and take your time to line those back up on that ramp. Because if you mess that up, and the, soon, the second that you power it back up, it's going to be over. And make sure you reassemble back all of this stuff over here. Because the locking mechanisms and things like that, if you don't do it right and you don't get them back on right, or you just say, oh, that's a locking, you know, just throw it away, what will happen is when the heads come back out, They'll fly right off, and they just keep right on going. <laughs> it's gone. So, and once that happens, it'll never come back because as soon as it, because it'll try to draw it back in, and it'll just scratch the heads right off the platter and blah blah. So, this one is a little bit harder, but this one is completely pl possible and plausible. The uh, the problem here is that these mount on the inside. So tweezers are extremely good for this, especially like surgical tweezers. So they, there's tweezers that push out, and there's tweezers that push in. So you want to get some that push out. And so you basically are going to do like a game of operation here. You're going to be very cautious. You're going to turn it on its side. You're going to go uh, down the side here, and you're going to put the tweezers around it and push them apart. And then this one's going to take two people to do it right, because you've got to move this set of heads back onto a live good platter without touching it and park them back in the same spot. It can be done a little bit longer, two and a half hours or so. Uh, it takes a little bit of practice, but again, we're only talking about that last 5%, last 4% of the drives that you can do that. If you see this, then you can just start praying, because it's never going to happen. You're not going to do it. It's not going to be able to be recovered. This is a SCSI drive with uh, 16 heads, 9 platters. It's, it, it's bad. It's gone. You'll never even get this mechanism out of here without scratching the platters in the first place, but I think it can't be done not this way. So let's look at some of the platter damage, and when you know, you can just pretty much quit. This is what happens, and, uh, and the head will keep on moving. It'll keep going, and the drive will keep trying to read the data, and it'll keep moving along, and it'll just scratch that platter. This is what it looks like. This one is an IBM hard drive. This one's a ceramic glass platter, and if you guys look at the picture on the myharddrive.com, you'll see um, that you can see through the platter. It really is glass. And so it scratched it. This one's kind of unique. It scratched both heads on both sides, scratched all the way across the platter. And so it dug off all the oxide, and you can see right through it. 
And it's pretty cool to look at while it's spinning and stuff, but that's... <laughs> And this guy got really mad. This guy, like, I called him back and I said, there's no way that you're going to ever get this data back. And he goes, he goes, I don't believe you. I want you to box it up and I'm going to take it to somebody else. And so when he got there, I had, like, taken all the little pixie dust and I put it in a little bag. And I said, you're right. All you got to do is sprinkle this once in a while and you'll see your data again. <laughs> he, he did not have that reaction. That, everybody else in the office did, but he... $50. I do like a $50 valuation. Here's the, other, here's the other key from that question, is that every data recovery house, and they don't want you to know this because you can hold them hostage, they do all the work before they tell you they can recover it. Like OnTrack says, well, we examined your drive and we'll send you a list. And this is what we can recover. It's not what they can recover. They did recover it. They're not going to even send you the list until they've already got all the data back and they already have it secure someplace. Because they only have one chance. If that drive dies in that process and they sent you this list, well, now they got liability. Oh, you had my data, but now you can't get it? What do you mean? So things like that happen. They already do it, and it's already done, and it's already sitting on a drive waiting for you to say, oh, yeah, I'm going to pay you. They're gonna just, they just won't tell you that. But uh, I do like a $50 evaluation fee, and because I'm already dealing with like corporate clients and things like that, it's not really a problem. I just tell them yes, no, good, bad, whatever, and, uh, and I get like 98% of everything back. So it worked out pretty well for me. This is a drive where the head hit the platter and I kind of just turned it sideways so you can see the light. Uh, this is a checkerboard pattern. It was basically skipping. It was And you're not going to get that back either. That one's pretty much done. Uh, and this is a good example of somebody who tried to do their own before they actually gave it to me and continued on. This is the other thing. It actually started out making these little tiny S's. Again, it kind of started skipping, but like a little piece of the metal dinged it. And so as the head's moving along, it's whacking the platter until it eventually does just do a complete scrape like this. But you'll get these little S's. So if you see the little S's, you're done there too. Uh, motor failure. You'll be lucky if it moves at all like this when you have motor failure. This is the reason why you can't do one with the motor failure. When, uh, when you take them off, the only thing that's in between these two platters, if you have two, if you have one, you can do it. You can move, you can buy another drive exactly like it, you can take that platter out and you can move it to another platter and you're in good shape. But if you got two, they spin freely as soon as you do this and this little piece right here is nothing. There's no grid, there's no nothing. It's all held by pressure and so you can see you just can't, and you can't remove that motor. That motor is part of the casing. This is actually just a cap for the motor. And so once you do that, the spindle won't be able to be removed and replaced. So again, this is one of those reasons why you can't do a multi-platter. When you have a multi-platter and you try to move two platters at once, because that servo information is actually what's making up that cylinder, you'll never line it back up again and you'll never get it moved over to another drive after you've done it. So once you remove those screws off the top of the platter, you're done too. So, And then it's all in the garbage, all of it. So good, the bad, the whole thing, just write your data on. Yes, sir? Yeah, and there actually is like a small little area that's already set up around it, and you can do that, but uh, it's really difficult to get multiple ones. I mean, it, there's no device that does it that I know of, and so you've got to do it, you know, again, and it's kind of the lowest common denominator. A lot of us are like, you know, there's an extreme amount of work once you get to this level, and there's no device that I know of that does that. I've been working on some things, but I haven't gotten anything that works quite right, like taking surgical clamps and like in two and three levels of them, but you can't get them just right. And if it moves even a micron, it's over. Yes, sir? 